day three at Index Asia 2017. Today we're focusing on the international pavilions, including those from France, Germany, Italy, India and Israel. This behind us is a um, vertical launcher, uh, original um, configuration, the vertical launcher of Sea uh, Dome. Sea Dome based on the uh, Iron Dome program. Iron Dome Tamir interceptor ported to a uh, naval uh, environment. Interceptor is almost identical land based interceptor. It performs land based missions and then some, not only taking care of land-based threats, your standard rockets and mortar fire, as Iron Dome does and has done, but taking care of um, modern naval uh, threats as well, your sea skimming missiles as well. Keep the ship healthy, to uh, keep neighboring ships healthy, and to protect the, uh, the land from the sea. A sea Dome was tested in uh, last February aboard a SAR-5 Corvette. This is designed for a, um, for a smaller vessel. The idea was that there's a lot of Corvettes, small frigates, um, OPVs that are out there that are carrying a lot of equipment, a lot of men that uh, are traditionally um, not protected. And we have a system which is very, very small. We've worked to compress the footprint, maximize the firepower for the given volume. We've worked on a system that can be easily integrated. Um, last integration on the SAR-5 took a number of months. And um, the idea is to get protection to the fleet as soon as possible in as small uh, footprint as possible. It's already on, on service in the SAR-5 in an emergency configuration. Um, and this will be in use in the, in the SAR-6. The, um, the uh, configuration right now is 40 of these bad boys on, uh, on every SAR-6. We're very excited about this. It's a brand new contract for the Swedish Defense uh, Materials Authority and uh, it's being contracted now, the next generation anti-ship missile for uh, the Swedish uh, Air Force for their next generation Gripens and also for the VSB class stealth corvettes for the Swedish Navy. So it's going to be a, a new air-to-surface and surface-to-surface -surface, uh, missile. Just looking at the outer dimensions, it's going to look very much the same. It's uh, uh, based upon a very proven concept that we've been working with for the past 30 years. Uh, but in terms of what the missile is and what it can do, it's going to be a whole new ball game. We're uh, completely reworking uh, both the, the, the outer shell of the missile and all of the internal systems. So a brand new target seeker, it's going to be a, uh, the uh, airframe is going to be lighter, made out of composite materials, which allows us to achieve a much greater range than the, the current generation of the system. And so while we, the current system has the best combination of warhead and range, the new system will retain that you know, front of the line spot that we have. Uh, also the system is going to be more future proof so uh, the software platform, the architecture that we're, we're developing for the next generation missile will allow for a much greater uh, rate of turnaround for uh, software improvements. Uh, the uh, mass will be reduced that we talked about that and then also all of these uh, changes together with the capabilities offered with the target seeker and the missile computer, the behavior of the system means that the defense penetrating capabilities of the missile will be greatly improved. This is the Swordfish Maritime Patrol aircraft from Saab and this is the smart way, the only way to do high-end anti-submarine warfare in a cost-effective platform. What we have is the Global 6000 from Bombardier, a long-range, high-performance jet platform that has been totally adapted and modified by Saab as prime contractor to be a high-end anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare platform, but also with a complete multi-mission capability for ISR, for patrol, over sea, over land. This is a true multi-mission platform, but with a complete 
anti-submarine warfare capability. What that means is that we have a mission system with acoustics processing, we have a sonoboy capability for multi-size boys, uh, up to 300 boys, but a standard load of about 200. We have a MAD system at the back for true low-level ASW capability. We have an advanced next-generation C4I system, can take about five operators in the cabin. Uh, crucially, we have a, a weapons payload. You can put about 1,700 pounds on each of the four pylons. That lets you carry a maximum load of six lightweight anti-submarine torpedoes, but you can mix the load. You can carry anti-ship missiles, like our Saab RBS-15, and torpedoes. You can also carry other stores. So this aircraft is shown carrying this SCAD life-saving search and rescue pods. The key discriminator here with this system is that you have high-end capability, but the platform is approximately 50% of the cost of the competition. Well, let's say two-thirds the cost of the competition, but 50% of the total life cycle cost. So you get the absolute high-end capability, full multi-mission, full air-to-surface and anti-submarine warfare capability, but on a platform that is adaptable, that is configurable to users' needs and that is supportable and sustainable across the whole life cycle. Singapore's Ministry of Defence announced during IMDEX Asia 2017 the procurement of two additional Type 218 SG from German company TKMS. The first two Type 218 SG submarines, which were acquired in 2014, have commenced construction following their steel cutting in 2014. They are projected for delivery from 2021. The Type 218 SG is based on TKMS's Type 214 design. According to TKMS, the Type 218 SG design has a length of approximately 70 meters, a diameter of 6.3 meters, a surface displacement of 2,000 tons, and a crew complement of 28 sailors. This is uh, designed by DRDO and the project production agency is BDN. We named it as Varnastra. It's a heavyweight torpedo. This is launched from ship. It is an anti-ship, anti-torpedo, uh, anti-submarine torpedo. Uh, the range is 10 kilometers. It is electrically propelled. The design aspect is completed and uh, trials are completed and uh, we are doing production for trial production for our Indian Navy. This will be inducted into Indian Navy. However, we are also planning, exploring the possibility of exporting this product to various Middle East countries and other countries also. Leonardo of Italy is showcasing all of the systems that will be fitted on board the PPA next generation vessel of the Italian Navy. From bow to stern, there will be a 127 mm main gun, 32 vertically launched surface to air Astor 30 missiles, 8 automat anti ship missiles, an SPS 732 LPI radar, the Kronos dual band. Is a radar with the C band and X band arrays. On top of the mast, the communication and electronic warfare suite, as well as the IFF antenna. There will also be the 25 mm remote weapon stations, the ODLS 20 decoy launchers, and finally, the new 76 mm above deck gun. It is a new product from Leonardo Defense. The new 76mm above deck naval gun system will be lighter and non-penetrating, but it will retain all the qualities of the existing 76mm super rapid gun, including the ability to launch the Volcano round for land attack and surface targets, as well as the dart for air targets. NVIDIA is showcasing the Sea Venom helicopter launch anti-ship missile. The jettison test took place last year in France from a Dauphin helicopter. 
Some further testing took place more recently, earlier this year, from a Superlynx helicopter in the UK. And the first actual launch will take place later this year. We also learned during IMDEX Asia 2017 that MBDA is studying a surface launch variant of this missile. The surface launch variant of Sivenom is being studied to be fitted on patrol vessels, frigates, as well as coastal batteries, and it will likely share some similarities with the Marque MK2N launchers.